Let's say my type needed to follow a path or be typed inside of a specific shape. Now there are some tools that do just this, the area type and the path tool type, but I'm going to show you how to do it using only the type tool. With the type tool selected, let's type along this path. First of all, I'm going to move my cursor close to the path and watch it change. It goes from a square to a line going through the eye bar. When I click on the word path, I get a blinking cursor and depending on how I've got my uh, alignment set up it may either jump to the center of the line or stay exactly where it is since it's left. I can then start typing along this line and all my words will follow it. As with the other ones I can highlight my words. I've got my character palette open so let's change the size of it and you can see it follows along the edge of it as well. Let's type along the inside line to get this one. Shift Command A will deselect it. If I move my cursor close to this one, and you can see if I run out of area, I'm going to get a little plus sign at the end here. I'm to move your type over because it's starting right there. I'm going to use my direct selection tool, the white arrow. With the white arrow selected, when I click on my line, you'll notice that there's a line at the beginning, the middle, and the end of my, uh, my type path. I can click on the beginning point and drag it back, and this will give me more room and a different starting point. Additionally, I can choose where to end my type by moving the end point, but in general I never do that. And I can move it specifically to where I want it to be. Let's choose my paragraph, make it center aligned, so now it's centered along with this one. If you need type to not be on this side of the line, but to be able to flip it over to the other side, here's how to do that. Click on the very center line point and drag it up. You can see that it'll flip over. Now I can release, and now my type is being typed on the inside of that particular path. All of that's done using the white arrow direct selection tool. The second thing you can do with type is to type inside of an object. So let's get our type tool again. Go back over here. If I wanted my type to fill up the circle, watch my cursor change as I move it closer to the edge. Since this is a close off path, it goes from being a square to a circle. Now when I click, I can start typing. Let's make it a little bit smaller so we can see it. Change the font size to 12. And my type will stay inside of that circle as long as I type with that one. Just as with any other area type, if I choose my uh, selection tool and change the size of the circle, it won't affect the type that's inside of it. Instead, it'll change the size of the circle, giving me more area. There are some more options to know about area type. You can find these options under Type and Area Type Options. This will bring up the Area Type Options dialog box. First of all, you can divide your area up into rows or even numbers of columns, and you can give your text some offset. So if you wanted a little bit of a margin inside of it, this is a way of doing it as well. I'm not going to do that for now, but make sure you hit the preview button to see what changes that you're creating. So if I wanted some inset, this is giving me a little bit of space inside of the area that I'm typing on. We'll hit OK.